Oh, hello there. Welcome back to Economics at Home. I'm your host, Mr. Myers. Today, we're going to be talking about national economic goals, a strong versus a weak economy. Now, this is going to be very short as we're going to discuss the different tools that economists use in order to judge how well an economy is doing. Just as you use a variety of different tools to keep yourself healthy, like running or exercising, which of course could be difficult seeing this out right now, all the gyms are closed. Our policymakers use a variety of different strategies to promote a healthy economy. This person is a very important person. Who knows who it is? Yes, Jimmy. You're right, it is Jerome Powell, the chairman of the Federal Reserve. Right now, he actually has a tricky job, right? Trying to keep our economy in check during the time of a pandemic when not a lot of people are going out and spending money. What are you spending money on right now? It's probably things like at the grocery store, buying food to make for yourself and basic necessities. You're probably not going out to eat. You're probably not buying new like furniture for your house or shopping for a new car. You're probably not planning a vacation unless you are. Maybe you want to plan one for the future because well, prices are so low right now. So government policymakers have three main goals for an economy. Goal number one is you want your economy to grow, meaning you want the output of your goods to increase over time. And that's not just one good, because that would be in microeconomics, like us saying, we want the, you know, uh, us to make more tissues over time. That, that's microeconomics, so if you're looking at one good. Macroeconomics, we're talking about every good out there, we want to produce more, more of it, more iPads, more toilet paper, more grocery goods, more cars, whatever it is. We want our output to increase. Because as long as your output's increasing, that means people are working, people are buying, your economy's doing well. Goal number two, you want full employment. Anyone who wants to be able to find a job should be able to find a job. Actually, interestingly enough, you don't want 0% unemployment though. We'll talk about that later when we do a, a section on unemployment. But you do want your unemployment pretty low, and you want people to be able to find a job at the current wage rate. Right now, it's starting to get more tricky, right? Because jobs are starting to lay people off. There was just some numbers released this morning. I'm making this video on a Thursday, of, uh, Thursday, March 20 something. Thursday, March, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to go look. But there, new, there's new information that came out this morning that there was an increase in unemployment by 280,000. And that's before we started shutting down restaurants, bars, things like that. Um, so that number is going to go up. So you know, th this is going to be tricky. And goal number three is keeping prices stable. It means no inflation, no deflation. To give you an idea of what inflation is, inflation is when we have an overall increase in prices in your economy, meaning you go to the store, you go to the car dealership, you go on vacation, no matter where you go, all prices are going up. That's inflation, just a general increase in the rise in the level of your prices. Deflation is the opposite. It means that prices are going down. We're going to talk about this in our next chapter when we start talking about all about inflation and deflation. But deflation is actually a bad thing. You would think like, that's awesome, I'm starting to save money, but it's actually worse than inflation. We'll talk more about that next chapter. Balancing those three economic goals, full employment, increase in economic growth, and uh, I just said the last one, but the video is throwing me off. Uh, keeping your prices stable. Balancing those three goals are tricky. We use three different indicators to tell us how they're doing. Three indicators that we know we can use to evaluate an economy. Number one, in order to tell how much stuff your economy is producing, if you're having an increase in the overall production, we use GDP, which stands for gross domestic product. 
We'll have a whole video and lesson on that. Unemployment. We use that in order to tell us, do we have full employment? We'll have a whole lesson and video on that. In order to tell us if prices are remaining steady, we'll be using inflation numbers. We'll have a whole chapter on that coming up. So that's the three main economic goals. Again, number one, we want, uh, you want your economy to increase the overall production of goods. Number two, you want full employment. Number three, you want to keep your prices steady. And what do we use to tell for following those three goals? We use GDP, number one. Number two, we use uh, unemployment numbers. And number three, we use inflation numbers. So there's a brief overview. There's an assignment that goes along with this one that actually gets tied into current events. Take a look at that, answer it in a paragraph, and I'll see you on the next video. Now I gotta come over here and turn it off.